Hey guys, it's James from jgscripts.com and I'm back with another showcase to show our handling editor. An original version of this script was actually what became our mechanic script, but I always wanted to actually put out this standalone handling editor um, as sort of a tie-in with mechanic and also just as like a separate tool for uh, car developers or sort of like more in-depth roleplay servers. So let me show you it. So to access the handling editor, you just use slash editor in the chat and it pulls it up like this. Now this tool is standalone, so you don't need a framework to run it, but you can use a framework. You can use QB, QBox, ESX, and that'll unlock some new features like um, job locking this. So you can actually give this to your mechanics, uh, job lock it to that mechanic job and let them use it alongside JG mechanic maybe, um, and let them do limitless amount of things with vehicles because they have every single option available. You have what you'd expect to see, which is all of the different handling options um, that you may or may not be familiar with. And you can see all the values that is currently this vehicle currently has. Now you can drag these sliders and it'll show you the original point that it's at and the new point, as well as being able to edit it directly here. And you can also reset that back to normal. Now every single handling value or most of the useful ones at least, um, will have information up here. So the first thing is that it's useful. Now this will signpost values that you should be editing because not all values are gonna help you build a good handling profile for a vehicle. So we actually signpost which ones you should be modifying as a priority and which ones that you maybe shouldn't be touching so much, such as downforce. And we've actually documented a significant amount of the handling values as well, using information from GTA mods and also Edlam's amazing handling guides. So we've put all that in um, and the information is right at your fingertips whenever you need it for things like the best value you should use, example values, um, and other information about like what you should avoid or what you should um, be doing with that value, which is really, really useful. So let's say I'm going to like change the value. So increase the air resistance, there's a bit more drag on this vehicle. I can go up here and just like filter it. So I can be like, okay, so I wanna do some engine things. We're gonna increase acceleration, increase top speed. And I've done my values. There is a really useful feature where I can actually click view changes and I can see all the changes I've made at a glance, um, which lets me see the differences I've made and maybe spot any errors. And now I'm ready to test it. So typically you have to apply this, um, mess around with it and go back into the tool again. But we have a built-in preview mode with telemetry. So it can help you test your handling file and get some real figures on how the vehicle's performing in terms of its speed, acceleration curve, and that can help you adjust it. So I'm gonna click preview. And this is our handling preview mode. So I have this telemetry meter at the bottom. So as I start driving, it's gonna measure my speed, it's gonna measure my acceleration curve. And it's also going to give me um, waypoint markers as well. So my 0 to 60, my 0 to 100, what kind of speed I'm getting out of it, my quarter mile, half mile. And this is actually completely configurable. So I can add any of these in that I want. I can customize them. I can add more markers. And the coolest thing about these markers is they actually have a built-in comparison in them. So if I go back out of this mode and I go to change it more, so let's say I increase acceleration you know, significantly, I increase top speed significantly, um, and then go to preview it again. My vehicle's gonna be even faster now, and I'm gonna get those differences. So it's gonna say, okay, well now it's 73% faster on the zero to 100, and I'm gonna see faster quarter miles, and maybe if you make the vehicle slower, you will see all of these differences. So it really makes fine tuning vehicles really, really simple having this sort of heads up. And also you have information like the gear you are currently in, so you can see if the gearing is working as you expect. And also as you can see here, the top measured speed, so 155 is our top measured speed there. Now at any point, I can actually do multiple tests in one preview by pressing control. So I can actually reset it and test again in case I messed up, for example. Um, and we can also use this tool standalone. So you can actually use this tool outside of the handling editor and job lock it yourself, but I'll cover that later. Now, our handling editor isn't just limited to the basic float values. Our handling editor also lets you edit things like vectors and also flags. So, for example, the center of mass offset is a vector. It lets us change the vector values, although it isn't previewable in real time. Same with the inertia multiplier. Now, with flags, typically with flags, it can be quite difficult 
to um, edit flags is you have to figure out the decimal value, which you later on have to convert to hex when you export. Now we have a visual editor. So let's say we have these model flags here and we have some advanced flags set as well. Um, we can click model flags and we get a visual editor. So we can see all the different flags, um, what they do, if it's an own, and you can just simply check them or uncheck them. So for example, this one here lets you not render exhaust particles. You can simply check that it will calculate a decimal for you and later calculate the hex when you want to go ahead and export it. We also have notes as well when things, um, maybe some strange behavior happens, just to give you a warning before you know, anything messes up. And we have the same here for advanced flags as well. Um, and this get, really opens access to a whole bunch of values that you didn't previously have access to. Um, for example, drift physics, um, various traction options, um, that some of the base vehicles are using. And now you can apply it to your own vehicles, third-party vehicles, or even older, you know, vehicles from the game. All right, so how many times have you been messing with a vehicle? Maybe it's one you've downloaded from the internet or one that a friend has sent you, and it just handles really, really awfully. So for example, this one here, it has a very fast, unrealistic acceleration when it sort of hits third gear there. And as soon as you try and turn the thing, it just flips over. Like it's an absolute nightmare. Now, even if you have a handling editor, it can be quite difficult if you're sort of less familiar. Um, oh, we've completely flipped it here. It, it's difficult if you're less familiar or especially if a car is really, really broken. Even if you do know what values to change, it can be really hard to just get it right. And you really just want something that is like normal to drive before you fine tune it. So we've actually built this directly into the tool. So if I open the editor and I go to our sidebar here and click simplified editor, what we've done is we've simplified all of the core handling values down to a few sort of like easy to understand options. And while this is nice for beginners to sort of like start working on vehicles, it's really great for normalizing a very broken car. So if I could just click acceleration, I can choose an acceleration. So for example, sports car for this one, um, I can change the top speed. This top, top speed is probably fine. 120 miles an hour is, is fine. Um, transmission, I can go in here and I can choose from a few different transmissions and this will set up like the number of gears, the shift times um, and fix all that stuff for me. So I'll do automatic. Drive trains, you can select from um, sort of fully front wheel drive, fully rear wheel drive, equal 50%, 50% and then some biases as well. So I'll do rear wheel drive bias on this. Then we have our brakes. We can choose um, some brake options. Uh, and then the more difficult ones, so there's traction. So we have a few different traction profiles. As well as drift, we have drift profiles for most of these. So this could actually be used to create a drift car as well, uh, get you started in like a drift tune. Um, so what I'll choose for this one is probably just normal traction for this. Um, suspension, just like a standard suspension. And then wing, which we don't generally recommend. This is um, gonna make it really like on rails. So you only want to reserve that for when it's realistic, maybe a track wing, maybe an F1 car. And now the hardest part usually of fixing a vehicle is body roll. Body roll is, is quite, it goes across quite a few handling um, values. And we've sort of managed to merge this all into one slider. And we have some guides here of what this does because it's very per vehicle. So we know that our vehicle rolls over when we when we drive. So move left if vehicle rolls in the direction of travel, that's not what's happening. Or well, the vehicle is too stiff, it's definitely not. It has way too much body roll. Move right if the vehicle flips over, yep, yeah, that's us. Or if the vehicle has a lot of body roll and it's not stiff. Um, so we know we need to move it across. So what I'm going to do in this case is move it. Now we have a lot of body roll, so we can move it quite a lot. But generally you wanna be moving it in sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.01 increments. But we can do, say, like a probably up to 0 0.4 for this one. And we can now go ahead and preview this. And right out of the gate, we have a really normal acceleration curve now. And we have a nice amount of body roll. We have that traction loss if you do extreme turning. But nice body roll, nice normal driving. And sure, this isn't perfect. Like, absolutely, we could tune more for this vehicle. We could have a little more realistic body roll. We could tune that traction even more, but we have a great starting point. We've completely fixed this vehicle. And now what we can actually use a tool for is to learn what it's done. So we can hit a few changes and see all the different changes it's made. And you can then switch into the advanced editor where it will show you all of the values it's changed. 
And as you go through, you can see the difference it's done. And then you can go ahead and read about it and figure out, okay, well, why is it done this? Because um, lower values are going to decrease the, um, the amount of roll, which is increasing the body roll. So it's therefore increased the value in order to fix the issue. And it can really help you not only fix the vehicle, but also learn about what the different values are doing. Now, the one thing you would want to do now is apply it. So we have a few different options for applying it. If you wanted to apply it to all vehicles, then you could do an export. So we have an export option. You can do an export to the handling.meta, you know, hit copy and paste that into the handling.meta for the file for the car, and then it'll apply to every car uh, whenever it's spawned in. But if you want to just apply it to this car, then you can just use our apply button. So we have apply, and then you can choose whether you want to write it to the database. So that means that it will um, store it based on the plate in the model. So next time it's spawned in, let's say from a garage, it will automatically reapply if you choose to store this. So I can choose that, press apply, and there we go. Now this vehicle's fixed, and even if I store it and put it away again, it will still let me like use that handling. Okay, so the second to last thing that I want to show is profiles. So not always do you just want to apply something or just preview it. Um, or just export it, sometimes you're halfway working through a, ch a certain tuning for a vehicle and it's not quite ready yet or you just want to save it for later or share it with a friend. You can do this really easily. So I have this work in progress for this tailgater here and I'm going to go ahead and click save as profile and give that profile a name like saving a file. I'll just call it um, work in progress tailgater tune. Press save. And it's saved. Now I can find all of my saved profiles here in the left hand side. So you see here's the new one I just added. And this is available to everybody. So everyone who has access to the profiles can all use this. Um, and you can create as many tunes you want without reducing performance as we only load a certain number at a time. We don't just load them all. Um, so it's really useful having access to everybody's tunes and then everyone can share them with each other. Plus if you're using a framework, you can also um, have your name of your user in here. Um, but that is limited to people using a framework. Now, you can then go ahead and load these in later or delete them. So for example, we have load. Um, let's say I want to load in um, my other work in progress one. I just hit load profile and successfully loaded and it loads it right in there. Okay, so let's say you're using JG Mechanic and you have already uh, servicing damage on and uh, you have custom tunes on some vehicles. This typically would uh, conflict if you're using a handling script um, because you'll read the handling script and it'll read those values skewed because it'll have, you know, servicing damage or it'll have a tune on it. And sometimes you want to edit those values, maybe the base values of the car, or maybe you want to remove servicing while you edit or test the vehicle. Now we have that. So if I open this car up here, this um, tailgater, this has got some damage. So it's already got some servicing damage. And when we go ahead and use the editor, we actually get a different menu. So we get select mechanic data mode. So it's recognized as being modified by JG Mechanic and it lets us choose either the current handling, so just as is, as you would expect usually. Take off the servicing damage so you can modify the handling without servicing or use the base handling. So ignore all modifications made by JG Mechanic and just pull in the base handling. And what that lets us do there is modify it more normally so then we can do our testing and apply a custom tune made for a customer that disregards um, handling we've previously done and so they don't conflict. Now also talking about JG Mechanic, we also have some other really cool tools um, for customers of JG Mechanic to help you build custom parts. So let's say you've um, created some changes. So let's say we're creating a new engine type and we're creating a new engine type with you know increased acceleration, increased top speed. And we've tested that and realized this would be a really good engine option for um, the JG Mechanic custom tuning items. We actually have an export for this. So you can go to export, you can go export to JG Mechanic tuning config. And what it does is it recognizes our current changes and it creates us a tuning.lua um, config for it. So just those values we've changed. And this is currently in the overwrite mode, where if you were to swap this, and let's say this was an engine part, it would actually overwrite with these values. But you can also do a modify type where it will calculate the differences that you've made and use a non-overwrite value tuning type. And this what let's let you do really is you can test all of your different types in game. 
you can try it on different vehicles and once you're ready it's really easy to export those exact values done you don't have to keep track of them by yourself just a handy little feature if you're trying to develop new parts for the JG Mechanic script. Alrighty, so the final thing I want to show quickly here is our standalone usage of the timing tool. So the timing tool, we found it in development to be very, very useful for a whole variety of things. So this script enables you to use the timing tool outside of the editor. So we have a default set up as just slash timing tool, and that brings it up and you can use it as normal for testing vehicles, maybe with other scripts, or maybe um, you want to use it for testing your, or use it for mechanics outside. You can actually separately job lock this. Um, so people who can use the editor um, don't have to be included in people who are able to use the, time, sta the timings tool standalone. So this means you can enable this for mechanics, but not enable the editor for mechanics, which is really, really nice. And again, you can hit control to reset this and do multiple tests. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you can get this from our store, jgscripts.com. And um, yeah, join our Discord, discord.gg slash jgscripts, and we will answer any questions that you have. Have a good one.